welcome back to my channel, Monica Faya is here. Things are a little bit different since the last time we spoke, as you may or may not know. I'm having a baby! So I'm actually 22 weeks. I would have never thought that I would be saying I'm having a baby, but here we are. I just wanted to get on this video and kind of talk about my journey getting pregnant because the emotions that you go through, you only really understand if you're in that situation or if you've gotten through that situation. I just want to be able for women to know that they're not alone. Every situation is gonna be different in order to maybe give you guys some hope or inspiration, whatever it is that I can do because I know that when I was going through it, a lot of the stories were, you know, how I knew I was pregnant. It wasn't really the story of how you got there. What were you feeling? It was just, the end result, which is obviously very happy, but the way like to get from A to Z, how was that? And I would like to dig a little deeper and um, have, give you guys a little insight of what I went through. So my journey is a little different than everybody else's because I was never a girl that thought to herself, I cannot wait to be a mom. I can't wait to start a family. That was never really the way that I felt. I, I didn't even play with dolls. Like the only dolls that I had were the American Girl dolls. So for so many years, I thought to myself that there was no way that I could be a mom. I just felt that I was too selfish. I came from a background of doing pageantry, doing bodybuilding competitions. So it was very focused on me my body and I, I really couldn't see me taking care of somebody else or doing anything to my body that would take away from doing that whole bodybuilding and competition era. So fast forward and my husband and I were married for about five years already. Been done with competing, done with pageantry. I started to have second thoughts about having a family or starting a family and having a baby. Part of me just felt like, now how can I say, oh yeah, I want kids. Like after so many years, it was no, no, I, you know, I don't want kids, no, blah, blah. You know, how can I come now and tell like my family and friends, oh, by the way, I want to have a kid. My husband and I, we, talk about, we talked about it and um, we finally kind of came to the agreement that something was missing in our lives and we were ready to to take that next step. I was led to believe my entire life, I guess I was naive, dumb, whatever you want to say, that the first time you try, like, you're just gonna get pregnant. So it didn't happen and then like I kind of read up and it said, oh, normally it takes about six months. And okay, fine. Every month, nothing happens. By this point, I was already full blown into this, like, okay, this is what I want. It wasn't like a just, oh, maybe, no, like this is, were in it. Nobody knew. It was a secret between my husband and I, and I, I loved it. I, I enjoyed having that little secret between us. I was starting to freak out a little bit. I kept hearing, no, it's okay. Like sometimes it even takes up to a year. It's literally a struggle if you've ever gone through any type of fertility issue. Is it's a struggle. You're constantly counting when you're ovulating. The two week wait is like the worst from the moment that you ovulate to the moment that you get your period. It is the worst two weeks of your life. There's nothing like the day that you get that first bleed and that's it. You're gone for, you know, all your hopes are gone for that month. And then you kind of have to start a new cycle and then you're, you're optimistic. You're trying something different. By this point, we're already almost a year into it. I wouldn't say we were trying like every single month. There was like some things in between, but it was about a year. And at this point I was like, okay, maybe I should start considering going to the doctor. But I also felt that that was against what I believed in. I am a functional health coach and I believe in more of the natural path, holistic ways. I didn't want to go the Western medicine way. It, it was a battle with myself. So I did go to my OBGYN and I just wanted to check my fallopian tubes, make sure they were opened and they were. And that is the worst test that I've ever experienced, the HCG. If you've ever done it, you know exactly what I mean. I, I literally got up from that table and I felt so dizzy. I thought I was going to pass out. Everything was opened and then I had read that the chances of getting pregnant after that, since everything was kind of flushed out, 
is bigger. So I was optimistic and I thought, well, you know, it still didn't happen. By this point, I was like, okay, I want to make sure that I am doing everything possible. I was trying to get my body better, not necessarily for the fertility, but just from a hormonal standpoint, my insulin resistance. So now I wanted to focus more on fertility and get it my ovaries, everything in tip top shape. Started going more the functional route and um, I got a fertility specialist, Chris is, Kristen DeAngelis, which is just amazing. She is still my coach through this entire pregnancy. And we did some tests, we did some supplements. I did tests at the beginning of this and then once like we were like about three, four months in, we did some more tests and I was basically, everything was better than when I started. So I was doing, everything possible and I I was still struggling whether or not to go to a fertility doctor. First of all, I kept thinking that the reason why we weren't getting pregnant is because I had been so many years saying that I didn't want children that I thought well, this is God's way of punishing me. And everyone kept telling me, no, that's not true. That's not how it is. But you can't help but think that it kind of is. I wanted to do it natural, but at what point do I decide, okay, it's time to get help. I kind of figured that my husband was more of the issue than I was. And I tried to get him to eat a little healthier, kind of change his lifestyle. He's very stressed out. He eats junk food. He would do it for a couple months, couple weeks, and then he would just fall out. And it was a constant battle. You know, I finally said, after about two years of trying, I finally said, all right, maybe we just have to get some help. And we did and we ran tests. And like I said, my ovaries, like my eggs were functioning of that of a 25 year old. All my exams were amazing, better than years prior. And they were just in complete awe of how someone my age who was considered like an older mom, a high risk pregnancy had such amazing numbers of someone who was way younger than her. And then we looked at my husband and that's when we realized, okay, it's a male fertility issue. But I, I just wanna be realistic because everybody's always so quick to blame the woman and say, what's wrong with the woman? What What is going on with the woman? Like, why is the woman not getting pregnant? Oh, she must have, it's because she's older. It's because I just wanna like show to the world that no, it's not always the woman. It's not always because she's older because look at my numbers. They were literally like, amazing my family history is not does not have any fertility issues on the contrary we're very fertile and my numbers were showing that so there was obviously something bigger and when we figured out that it was my husband then it made complete and total sense that's when i kind of realized okay there's nothing that i can be doing more than what i already am in order to do this like i've done the most so we need to go the route of going to see a fertility specialist. We did an IUI. Because of how great my numbers were, the doctor felt that I did not need any additional hormone, which I was completely against. I was always, if we're gonna do this, I wanna do it with no hormones. Like, I think my body can naturally do this. My, like our bodies were meant for this. And he was in a grant with me, so we did it completely natural. The only thing that I did was a trigger shot, just so we can get the ovulation correct, but everything else was just my body. No additional eggs, nothing. About a year and a half, we finally had to end up telling my mom because there was just gonna be a lot of doctor's appointments that I was gonna have to do. Um, so I needed to let her know, but she was, Basically the only one in the family that knew. My father didn't know, my sister didn't know, nobody knew. The only one that knew from the very, very, very beginning was my best friend who had gone through the same experience. She also didn't want to have children. Then she did and then she ended up going to a fertility doctor but she ended up not even having to use it, whatever. So I knew that she was gonna be able to understand me which is why I needed that support through this because at the end of the day as women, your husband, is in it but it's not going to be the same you're he's not going to be thinking about it 24 7 like you are 
any little pain, any little thing that's different, you're going to think, oh my God, is it? Oh my God, is my period coming? Like a man for as much as he wants, it's just never going to be the same. So a woman can really truly support you and understand you. And that's the only reason why she knew because nobody else in my family had ever really experienced this. So I felt like nobody really knew. And I also felt like a hypocrite that I didn't want children. And, and then now, you know, I'm going through all this. I knew in my gut, to me, it felt off. They had me trigger on a when, on a Tuesday and they didn't have me go in until Thursday to do the IUI. And I was already having ovulation pain. We should go sooner. Like I should be there on Wednesday. They made me go in on Thursday. So right there, I think we lost the window of opportunity. And then when we were there, apparently my uterus, or I'm sorry, my cervix is tilted and they couldn't put the catheter up correctly. And it was like this whole ordeal. You're already stressed enough. And then the fact that you've got people poking up in there, call another nurse. And it was in, uh, in all of this, cause you can't pee. So I was like dying. The, obviously the stress was through the roof. The two weeks happened, you go and do your blood work and it came back negative. And I was very, very sad. I, I'll never forget, we had a Burt Kreischer comedy show that day. And I kind of think it, it was good because it got my mind off it and made me laugh a little bit because I was just, just doubting everything. Maybe it really is me. Maybe it we're just not meant to be parents. My husband's like, I think we should do it again. And I was just like, I don't know. Honestly, the experience I just went through was awful. And the doctor agreed. He's like, I think you guys should do it again. You know, that time that I did the IUI, I had told a little bit more people and they like prayed over me and everything. So I thought for sure this is it. After talking it over with my husband and talking it over with the doctor, we decided to go for a second, time, uh, second round. They triggered me and the very following day, they had me go in and do the IUI. So that was already a good sign. The nurse that came in, she was like, you have a tilted cervix, right? Okay, cool, we got this. She's like, okay, I'm gonna put it in. I want you to breathe, relax, think happy thoughts. Before you knew it, it was done. And I was like, that's it? Like last time, and she's like, yeah, that's it. And to me, honestly, one of the parts, whatever, call me crazy. But at that time we had my little pup, Maddie, our golden doodle, she was in training. And it just so happened that right at that moment, my husband had got on Instagram, um, like after it was, cause you have to sit there and lay down for 15 minutes. So my husband had gone on Instagram and noticed that there was a video of her, um, like of training cause the trainer likes to posted and kind of keep us up to date with what's going on. Um, so it's kind of like she was there with us and it kind of, that made me happy too. And it made me relax. And I was able to meditate as well, which the first time I was not because I just had to pee and I was just so stressed. So I was able to meditate. And after the IUI, I had read, mind you, at this point, I feel like you just do whatever is you can. And I had read that having French fries after and having a lot of pineapple and pomegranate juice helps. So of course, right after the IUI, we went to McDonald's, I got myself a thing of fries. For about five days after, I was having all the pomegranate juice and all the pineapple. I bought a thing of pineapple, I ate that for five days, at least once a day, and then I had pomegranate juice at least once a day too, at least like four ounces. There was this feeling that I, I don't know how to describe it, but that I had never during the two years of this process ever had this feeling before. We were actually car shopping and I just got this feeling of like, this is it. And there was nothing but literally car shopping. And I was like, I don't know why, but I feel like this one's gonna work. Then fast forward to the following week and it was already November and I celebrate the entire month of my birthday. So I was actually going to um, a tea party for my birthday. And I remember feeling, and this might be TMI, but I remember feeling this like leaky feeling down there, which I would always get like right when Aunt Flo was coming to town. So I was so mad. I was like, I cannot believe this. 
I'm gonna get my period. Like I barely even enjoyed, mind you, the people that I was going with, nobody knew anything except my mom. Nobody knew anything that was going on. So I had to put a front. It was my birthday. I had to be super happy. And I was just like, oh my God. I have to like, I didn't even want to go at that point. So I went and um, it was a good distraction, um, but I, I have a feeling that I was like, this thing is going to come anytime soon. Like this was Saturday and Thursday was when we were, we had to go do blood work. That, I don't know if it was that night or the night after, I kind of just had a meltdown. Through this journey, yes, I've had moments of like crying, which I, I don't cry very much. I've had moments where I was crying and I just wanted to give up, but this particular moment was just, I, I was done. Like, I just felt like this was it. It's not gonna happen for us. I guess I'll just have like 30 dogs. And I, I really, really lost it. Like, I really lost it. I truly lost it. I'm gonna do this one more time because my husband's like, we can't give up. You know, maybe this time we'll just try with a little bit of hormones. And at this point I was just like, screw it. Let's try it. I made an appointment with the fertility doctor on Wednesday and we were supposed to go in on Thursday, the following day for blood work. So I kind of told him, oh, I don't think this is going to work. You know, I don't think this one really worked. So what's going to be our next step? And then he's like, well, we could try Clomid. Let's try Clomid this time around. And then I was like, oh, since I'm here already, can I just do my blood work? I mean, I have to come in tomorrow anyways. And he's like, yeah, sure. That's fine. So I did my blood work. My husband goes, we come back home, my husband goes to work and I go on like about my day, I finish with my clients, like work out, do everything. Finally, I'm like in my pajamas, like nine o'clock at night. I'm laying down, I'm watching TV, I'm on my phone and I get like, I don't know why, I check my email. It says your test results from are available. And I was like, hmm, I never got that last time. So I was like, huh. Whatever, I guess I'll check. That way I can go on with my merry life and just start focusing on, on getting the Clomid and, and what the following steps are gonna be. So I check it. I mean, even telling you this, I'm getting nervous. Um, I check it, I go in, I log in, I check it. And my HCG level, it's in red and it's like 189. And I was like, huh? So I'm like, wait, if you're not pregnant, your HCG level is like negative one. And I kind of, I like Googled really quick. I'm like, I know this, but I want to make sure. And I have freaked out. I go running downstairs. My parents are asleep and I wake up my mom and I'm like, mom, I think I'm pregnant. And I like start bawling and she's like, let's take a test. So I take a pregnancy test and exactly like the two lines come up so fast. And I'm just like, I, I can't believe it. Like, and my mom was still like, okay, but I don't want to like get your hopes up. Are you sure? And I'm like, yes, I'm sure. A woman's not supposed to have HCG if you're not pregnant. I want to tell Kevin, but like, I want to do it in a cute way. So I went to the dollar store, which was like the only thing that was open. I bought some balloons, which by the way, those balloons are still to this day, they're up. They're like, now is when they fell a little bit, but those balloons <laughs> are intense. And I bought like a little thing, like little booties and stuff. And I was waiting for him. That night he took so long to get home and I was so nervous. He finally got home and I just had that there on the bed and he couldn't believe it. And we just both started bawling and he was still like, I don't know, let's get the okay from the doctor. He was a little bit hesitant. And the following day, they call me and they're like, congratulations. But I, of course, didn't seem that surprised. She's like, you you knew, didn't you? And I'm like, yeah, I did. Oh, okay, because you didn't sound I was like, I know. And then, of course, like there's always a little like concern. So they checked my HCG levels, they were rising. And so, you know, everything has progressed correctly. And here we are week 22 the emotions that went through it i can't even explain it to you as a person that's not very emotional it definitely gets to you you know i remember my therapist like every single month oh no this isn't it and we had to you know talk through it it was hard not giving up but there's always a little bit of giving up when you get that when you get your cycle but i think that i tried to just keep up optimistic until that last time that i just 
I lost it. I can't even describe it until you fully go through it because it seems that everyone around you is able to get pregnant and you're not. It seems like when you're struggling that there's kids all around you. And sometimes I, like since my mom knew and my best friend knew, I sometimes felt like, are they looking at me the way that I look kids? Like, are they saying, are they feeling sorry for me? And I hate people feeling sorry for me. And then the fact that nobody ever suspected anything. So I kept getting asked, are you gonna have kids? It's really difficult when for two years you're trying and people are constantly in your ear asking you if you're gonna have kids and why are you not having kids? Your time is clicking, tick tock, have kids. You kind of know, okay, my time is clicking, but I am trying to be optimistic, but at the same time, you just don't wanna tell anybody. And because I don't want people to have pity for me, but okay, fine, nobody knew what was going on, but then why get in people's business? That's the one reason why you shouldn't get in people's business because you don't know what's going on. So that to me was very hard. And it was constantly asking, do you want kids? Are you gonna have kids? Why aren't you gonna have kids? Like, you know, hurry up, because if you're gonna have kids, it was like a day that maybe you just found out you got your period. And you're just like, oh my God, biting your teeth and just smiling and just saying, ah, oh, you know, God wants it. That was definitely the hard part. People not truly understanding and just getting in your business without really knowing what's going on made the journey even harder. Like I said, unless you're in it, you don't really feel the emotions. You don't know the emotions. You know, you don't feel the longing to get that positive. Like I, there was one point that I was just like, I don't think I'm ever gonna know what it's like to feel pregnant. I don't know if I'm ever gonna get that positive test. You know, at one point I was like, maybe I'll just ask someone to, that's pregnant to pee on a stick for me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's positive. So it's a lot of longing and, and wanting and your trust and faith in the universe and God, whatever it is that you believe in, not having control over the situation, which is really hard. You're literally counting. It, it, the intimacy of it all is taken away. And there's months that you and your partner don't even want to do anything because it's just chore at this point. There's just nothing really sexy about it. You're also gaining weight because you want like your hormones to be healthy. So you can't really be in a diet, but you feel like, oh my God, I'm so, so it's a lot of things going through your mind as the woman. But fertility journey is, is not easy. And I know that a lot of women, it's, it's longer than two years for them. They're still waiting or that day never comes. It, it's very challenging. I don't think it's anything that should be taken lightly because through the situation, I remember things would happen to other people and I just kept saying, oh, what they're going through is so much worse than I am. You know, I, I can't feel bad for myself. And, and that's not true. What you're going through is hard and you should have that to feel sorry for your, not to feel sorry, but it's okay to feel your emotions. It, it shouldn't be a competition of what you're going through is harder or, or what I, that's what you're going through right now. And that for you is like one of the hardest things. You should be able to feel whatever it is that you want to feel. And that was something that I struggled with. I, I kept thinking this was punishment because I didn't want children for so long. In a way, I feel that because I did not want children, that if I would have gotten pregnant really fast, I don't think that I would cherish it as much as I do now. And I don't think that I would value it as much. I think that because of how hard it was, I sometimes look down on my belly and I'm just like, I can't believe that you're in there. Like you made it. Like I sometimes just go in there and tell her, you're such a warrior. Like you made it. I cannot believe you. It's, it's literally the miracle of life. And having not gone through my journey, I think that I would have taken it more for granted than what I'm doing now. So I kind of do feel that I've always been a firm believer that everything happens for a reason and in its own time. I'd love to hear any stories, you know, or any struggles that you guys are having. I love to be here and help you the best that I possibly can. I'm no doctor, but I can just give you my love and support through it all. So please feel free to comment below and I'll catch you for part two.